The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Mosin Zia, now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also time to give a shout out to official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award winning author Mia Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mia and Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia and Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Missing by Mia and Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be here on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show at the on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with an amazing um, author and writer of his uh, new book coming out on um, Beacon Publishing called The Hawthorne Blow. And it's uh, based about... Um, uh, uh, what happened in um, Lake Superior, and we'll talk about that almost similar to um, of the uh, Evan Fitzgerald and um, just hauntingly somehow similar. He's also an FBI agent. And he's lived in several states and uh, currently in um, the upper part of Michigan, and he just has an amazing story to tell. And, um, you know, lots of really good stories about the Hawthorne Blow and more. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in upper Michigan or somewhere in the U.S., wherever he's at. Ladies and gentlemen, the very talented author of the Hawthorne Blow, 
Matthew Hellman. Matt, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Mike. It's great to have you on board, too. So you've, you, so you're an author of the book Hawthorne Blow, and uh, you've uh, been writing for some time as well, too. You've lived in several states. You're currently in the um, upper Michigan as well, too. And um, you have a very neat job as an FBI agent. And um, also you lived in several states and uh, stories inspired by real-life experiences. And you just had an amazing story and amazing journey to tell. And before getting to all that and uh, talking about your book, tell us how I first got started, Matt. Well, uh, actually, I, I got a degree from Michigan Technological University in uh, electrical engineering. And while I was getting the degree, I, I started a hobby of doing stand-up comedy. Oh, wow. I and, didn't know that. Yes. And uh, I had a monologue that I would do. And even after graduating, I, I continued doing that a little bit. But I discovered a, a venue called Comedy Sports, mm -hmm. which there there are uh, franchises all around the U.S. that is improv comedy. And basically you have two teams of comedians on stage competing in kind of predefined games, but you get the subject matter suggested to you from the audience. And uh, doing that, I, I had just a blast because... You never knew as a comedian what was going to happen on stage. <laughs> and that was uh, a real good taste of entertaining. And uh, doing that, I, I met and, and hung around with a lot of very creative people, of course. And I, I kind of had this bug even back then uh, to start writing, you know, creating stories that, that people would enjoy. So that's where the initial plant or initial seed was planted uh but comedy sports uh was was unique because you had to make everything up as you went there was nothing that you had memorized it was just off the cuff instantly mm -hmm. and um that i think was very helpful for the creative process too because i've discovered as i write i will get a thought that, that comes from somewhere in the ether, and I'm able to grab that thought and kind of run with it and, and, and turn it into a story, which is essentially what we were doing on stage then. Mm -hmm. So after doing that, um, I, I worked as an engineer and as a hobby. I, I did the comedy sports. Uh, I ended up then, for my job, my engineering job, <clears throat> excuse me, traveling to Brazil. Wow. And I was down there for three months uh, during Carnival. <laughs> and <laughs> what an eye-opener that was. Uh, that was must have been 1995. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot from just being abroad um, in that it taught me how to relax. <laughs> the Brazilians <laughs> are, are very good at not getting stressed out pretty much about anything and it was unique coming from the united states where everything is go move everything is critical mm -hmm. uh time you know time critical mm -hmm. and we got down there and one of the interesting a, a good way to illustrate what i mean is we were starting up the first continuous caster still mill in Brazil. This was a big deal. And this was a huge, huge company. They had their own fire department, their own library, their own preschool. I mean, it was massive. Oh, wow. As we got closer to the startup date, one of our uh, pieces of equipment failed. Uh -oh. uh, something broke on it. Yeah. And unfortunately, the replacement part, there wasn't one in Brazil. So we had to get one shipped down from the United States. Well, it wasn't going to make it down in time to make the startup date. And our team lead had to go to the president of this massive company and say, we're not going to make the, the startup date. Uh -oh. And of course, we were all kind of like, man, I'm, I'm glad it's you and, and not me because I wouldn't want to, you know, have to take the chewing you're going to get. Uh, he went in and he told the president, 
uh, but, you know, bad news. One of the pieces broke. Can't get a replacement part um, in time to meet your startup date. Mm-hmm. And the president of the company looked at him and said, when will the part be here? And he said, two days after the startup date. And wow. the president said, yeah, he says, we'll change the startup date. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> that was all getting I mean, it, getting worked up over like two days startup day in Brazil. Oh, my goodness. I think we'll flock there and do some business. OK, we'll change the startup <laughs> date. And America, you'd say you're fired or something. So, wow. Oh, <laughs> what an <yeah>. eye opener. <laughs> Well, that's just kind of the way they looked at life. If if you can't change it, well, deal with it and 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 move on. And that really helped me relax in, in my day to day life. And uh, in the writing process, it's it's also helpful because there are some things that uh, you know as you're writing, you hear of writer's block a lot. And uh, well, if if you get to a point in your story where you can't move on. I say, okay, well, I'm going to skip to a different part of the story then and, and continue writing because I don't need to write it in a chronological fashion necessarily. I can put scenes together and fill in the holes. Mm. Uh, so I always try to keep moving forward regardless of, of what uh, lay in front of me. So. That is an interesting approach because I've seen some writers try to go from start to finish to get several writing blocks. It sounds to me the way you describe the process, you like, you know, write one scene, write another scene, write another scene, and later you go and put it together. It almost sounds like putting together a movie, shooting different scenes, then piecing it together. Like it looks like it went from start to finish, but you just like, you know, one scene of this, one scene of that, and just put everything together. That is very amazing. Yeah, it's it, it works for me. Uh, a lot of people, you know, everyone writes differently, uh, and generally, I'll kind of plot things out ahead of time mm-hmm. uh, to some degree. But I'll I always have ideas for scenes, and I have to I have to get them out. I have to write them, and when I write those, a lot of times, what will happen is like I told you before, you get that uh, that that little seed that thought that comes in and you go wow i could go here with this Mm. story and sometimes that gives rise to subplots or a whole list of additional scenes uh and it's so writing for me is a lot like reading for the readers Mm -hmm. because you don't necessarily know what's coming next right uh and and that's that's very entertaining it, it does sound very entertaining as well, too. And uh, what was that one precise moment that influenced you into becoming um, an author? It's like, think about that one precise moment where that one instance and just simply lights up and says, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life or my career. Well, the one precise moment, um, I guess it would be I, I had, and, and this is kind of funny because uh, my previous novel, Solomon's Seal, uh, was published in November of 2019, mm-hmm. and that was kind of the story, my first novel, that was based on my inspiration. And, and, and basically, I was sitting at a table, we were living in upstate New York, and I was sitting at a table uh, in our dining room, looking out the, the patio doors, and we backed up to acres and acres of woods. Mm-hmm. And I was looking out there, and there's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, about 70 yards uh, between the house and the wood line. And as I was looking out there, all of a sudden I thought I saw something move, something you know, something big go past in the shadows. And I didn't see anything, uh, but it made me think, huh, now what if there was a trail camera out there? and caught, let's say, a mountain lion. That would have been very interesting, or a bear, or something like that. And I thought, well, what if I had a trail camera out there, and it caught something else? Mm -hmm. Something wicked, something dark and dangerous and uh, unknown to man. Uh, And the seeds of a short story came to mind, and 
I, I wrote a short story where that's precisely what happens. Basically, the guy has a trail cam taking video, and some dark shape all of a sudden rushes it, and the video goes you know, to static. And he and his family then later are attacked by this creature in their home. Well, that short story, uh, I, I wrote that short story and a few years ago showed it to uh, a friend of mine who's also a published author, uh, John Fortunato, and he read it and he said, well, this isn't a short story. This is the first chapter of your novel. And, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, parts and, one, two, three, four, five, up to 25, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the funny thing about that is there's so little from that short story that actually appears in the novel now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because just, just through rev- revisions and, and everything else, um, some of the concept is still there, but it, it certainly expanded a lot. But I think it was in that mo- moment sitting there just thinking, <clears throat> you know, what if – I saw something unusual out in the woods and I, and I wanted to you know, capture that in words and, and having really thoroughly enjoyed entertaining people uh, on the stage. Uh, well, you know, being in the FBI, uh, being on the stage is not an option right now. <laughs> mm. so, well, well, that's a given unless you do it by, by zoom or Skype or virtual or anything like that. And, and I also read an article too, where, um, they're taking things like doing things outside, like outdoor classrooms, outdoor theater, outdoor everything. It's like, you know, don't worry about the inside. Just take everything outside. That's been a new thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. But you know, even aside from that, uh, the bureau just, if you're an agent, you're, you're prohibited from outside work essentially, uh, which, you know, in performing on stage, they would probably frown on that. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, perhaps. It, exactly. Or in case, um, the president happens to be there too. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. But, uh, the, the performing, I, I enjoyed that. I wanted to, I like to entertain, uh, and writing was something I can do in my own time. Uh, I don't need a contract. I, I'm not on salary. It's I can write or not. It's it's up to me, and it works perfectly with what I'm currently doing, and it would certainly uh, be something I would enjoy doing in retirement as well, uh, which is what I'm hoping for to establish a good readership, uh, get my skills uh, absolutely maxed out so that by the time I do retire, uh, which is in a few short years, um, I will be able to construct stories and novels that everyone wants to read and, and everyone enjoys. Mm-hmm. And that's so amazing, too. We'll talk a little more about uh, how you got involved with the FBI, a little bit more about your comedy, your books, and more. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor, international award-winning author Mia Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion, and those you love be the first to go missing. Available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Missing by Mia Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And follow The Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author of the uh, book uh, out on Beacon Publishing, the Hawthorne Blow here on The Mike Wagner Show. He was... Um, 
graduated from Michigan Tech in electrical engineering. He worked in Brazil. He's a stand-up comedian. And also um, did a little bit of work as an FBI agent. And before um, we get more into about uh, the book, The Hawthorne Blow, and uh, how did you first get involved with the FBI? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, when I got done with the project in Brazil, uh, it was kind of, you know, I was still fairly young in engineering, and it was a, a great success. And, uh, however, I, I still felt a little desire to do something else, something more. And what really hit me, I was living in Minneapolis at the time, and uh, a young man by the name of Jacob Wetterling was abducted mm. in St. Cloud, I believe it was St. Cloud, Minnesota, uh, at gunpoint. He was nine years old, and he was with his cousin and a friend, if I recall correctly. And he was abducted and never seen again. Wow. And I remember thinking, I wish I was doing something other than sitting here wishing I could do something. Mm-hmm. And that's when, kind of out of the fog, the idea of the FBI started coming to me and I, I did some research and I, and I thought well I'm an electrical engineer <laughs> they uh, they probably have electrical engineers they do you know uh, electronic surveillance and things of that nature so I reached out to the local office and, and asked them you know if they have jobs for for double E's and they sent me an application uh, for a special agent you know a gun gun toting agent <laughs> mm-hmm. and I kind of thought eh, that's not really what I was thinking you know I was thinking more of like a you know, lab position or engineering research position. And I called them up and said, hey, you know, do you have anything in that realm? And they said, well, you pretty much only get to uh, the engineering research facility if you're an agent first. Oh, wow. Uh, ah, okay. And I went, oh, all right. <laughs> so I applied for the position. And the whole hiring process at that time, it took, it took me a year and a half. Oh my! Uh, the whole process, and during that process, I became more and more excited about the prospect of becoming an agent and and what I would be doing, mm-hmm. and how I would feel about doing it. Uh, so that was that was kind of how things started rolling. And uh, once we got to the point where they said, "Yeah, you you know you passed all the tests, you're you're good to go." Uh, I was I was chomping at the bit at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very exciting. Secret Agent Man by Johnny Rivers is running through my head right now. But <laughs> go ahead and continue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my! But um, but yeah, um, you also um, you know continue on as well too. Um, you know a bit of work as well too. And um, I, I guess the question is is kind of like, um, is that how do you manage to put everything? all together you know that's the thing you know with uh, you got an electrical engineering stand-up comedy fbi agent and also writing and um how you managed to put it together and also um maybe some other things that also um you know get, put things together as an author i mean what you do is just so amazing well you know that's yeah there's i i do way too much <laughs> uh I'm, I'm the first to admit i i'm kind of a jack of all trades mm-hmm. and uh, even even my hobbies are kind of constructive. I, I, I'm a home brewer, and that portion of, of my hobbies was even uh, kind of tainted by my engineering background and wanting to know how things work. And, and when I started home brewing, I, I kind of thought, well, you know, back in the day when, you know, how did people brew beer? They certainly didn't go to the beer store and, and buy a package of yeast to right. you know, ferment their, their wort. And so uh, I began to capture my own brewing yeast uh, in the wild and <laughs> wow, and use that to make some beers. And that was an adventure because you could get some that were, I mean, the very first one I, I captured and, and made a beer from, I'll be honest, the beer tasted like dirt. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, hey, that's a good one on the market. Dirt beer available now. I yeah. like that. Dirt beer. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, but I had others that uh, produced some decent-tasting beer, uh, unique flavors, and and some of them were, uh, you know, some were good, some were bad. It's kind of like fishing. You you, you might catch, uh, you might catch uh, an eel. You might catch, 
you know, bass, you might, you don't know what you're going to catch and, and how good it's going to be. So I, I do that and, and just bringing it all together, it kind of comes down to managing my time because I, I just enjoy doing too many things. Um, but at the same time, doing all that stuff gives me a lot of life experiences, a lot of different insights, uh, a lot of different outlooks that I can bring to the stories and to the characters in the stories. Because obviously I've, I've met a lot of interesting characters, um, both uh, doing homebrewing and, and as an FBI agent, and having gone to Brazil as an engineer, uh, meet some very, very interesting people. Mm -hmm. And and also, too, with the people that you meet as well, too. And um, are those factor in the book, uh, Salmon Seal, and also the the Hawthorne Blow? Oh, yes. Yep. Um, With with Hawthorne Blow, as far as experiences and and researching, uh, things like that, uh, I I like to put some thread of... (laughs) truth in in my stories and and by that obviously there's there's a lot of truth in them but usually i like to get something unique to pull uh from reality um in the hawthorne blow there's uh, a story and and i'm not going to give away uh, give away the spoiler but there is a story about a shipwreck on lake superior uh and i will say this much it was in 1886 and when I read the story about what happened with that particular shipwreck, I, I thought to myself, well, that is a good basis for a horror story right there. Oh, wow. And, and that is integral to, to the Hawthorne blow. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, if someone wants to follow me on, on Twitter or Instagram, they can go to MatthewHellmanAuthor.com and find my, my links there. I will be dropping hints in the next you know month or two as to what that event was. If they're interested, uh, someone who's very interested will probably be able to find it on their own. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it was kind of a creepy story when I read it, <laughs> and I thought, man, that's got to be part of a you know a, a novel I write, or in this case, a novella. Mm-hmm. Uh, with with Solomon Seal, um, I also discovered the story of St. Anthony the Great, who uh, went into a crypt or tomb overnight, apparently, to battle some demons or was attacked by demons while he was in there. And his assistant or or friend went in the next morning and and pulled him out, and he was all tore up. Uh, His body was, as, as they said, marked with stripes, uh, where he had been clawed and, and ripped at, and they tried to get him some medical help, and he said, "No, I, you know, bring me back in there. I have to, I have to battle these demons and finish them." And they brought him back in, and and he is able to do the job and and has a conversation with God and so forth. But that story comes to life in. Solomon Seal with one of the characters in such a way that I had I had written a great deal of that book before I even discovered the story about St. Anthony the Great, and it just matched up so perfectly uh, with the main protagonist that I, I was like, I, I have to include this somehow. And, and I did work that in uh, in the form of the Order of St. Anthony in, in Solomon's Seal, which is kind of a little society that appears in that book. That is amazing. And where can we find Solomon's Seal at? Uh, that's uh, available at any bookseller, uh, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, uh, Powell's Books, Hudson Books. Uh, it's available both in paperback, in uh, e-reader. Uh, it's it's you could go to your local independent uh, bookstore and and ask them to order it and they can get it in for you. We 
We certainly will do so, and we're going to talk more about the, the Hawthorne Blow and uh, what's coming up uh, for author Matthew Hummond here on the Mike Wagner Show. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs and brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war running author Mia Mosin Zia of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with author Matthew Hellman after this timeout on the Mike Wagner Show. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is extraordinary relation of ordinary people based on a real life relationship. It's just it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, it's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We are back with author Matthew Hellman of Beacon Publishing, the Hawthorne Blower here on The Mike Wagner Show. And Matthew, um... You know, you know, just listening to uh, what you're saying about the Hawthorne blow uh, taking place in Lake Superior, what first got you interested in that case? Well, um, I, I live on the very, very, very close to Lake Superior, and I see it every day when I drive to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is, for someone who's never seen it, it is like looking at the ocean. I mean, you can be in the middle of it in a boat and not see shore anywhere. It's, mm-hmm. it's massive. And, uh, well, it's got the same approximate surface area as South Carolina. So it's, <laughs> it's a big, big lake. Uh, but the, it, it's so big and so deep and my mind wanting to come up with a horror story. Uh, and I also enjoy ghost stories and I thought there are or have been a lot of shipwrecks on, on Lake Superior. Mm-hmm. And I thought what a unique setting for a ghost ship story. Uh, what better setting than Lake Superior? Something that's that's cold and deep and storms come up. I, I remember as, as a young man going fishing on Lake Superior uh, with my grandfather and my father in just a, a small uh ski boat essentially we we're just going to do some trolling not far from shore and we got out there it was a beautiful summer day not a cloud in the sky and we're trolling in about 280 feet of water and we can see shore uh, sh- shore is probably only about two or three miles away from us and we're cruising along also my grandfather said reel it up we gotta go and i said what why do we have to go? He said, a storm's coming. And I said, what are you talking about? Storm's coming. And I looked toward the Western horizon. Now the Western horizon was probably about six miles distant, maybe maybe not quite that far. And just above the tree line was a thin line of gray. Wow. And I thought, wow, okay, that's, that's a long ways off. And we got to get going right now. And you know, you got to reel in 300, 
feet of line. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm reeling in as fast as I can go, and he says, hurry up, hurry up. And in the meantime, he's trolling, trolling us back towards the breakwater. Long story short, before we ever got anywhere near that breakwater, we are going over four-foot swells in this little boat, and you can't take those fast because you go up one side and you come down the other. And if you come down too hard, you drive the bow right into the the uh, surface of the next wave. He did that once, and water came over the bow and came flowing past our feet, and uh, that was <laughs> that was melancholy as a kid because that's ice cold water, and I'm going good grief. You know, we're we gonna get sunk out here. And so he had to, my grandfather had to start taking the swells in a little different manner. So we, that didn't happen again, but that made it, our, our progress that much slower. Uh, ultimately, we made it to the, the breakwater about the time that clouds were blowing over the top of us and, and we were fine. But seeing how fast that storm came in uh, and how we had no warning that you can see how how mariners out there could run into trouble mm-hmm. and so i've I've had some interesting experiences on Lake Superior, and uh just knowing about the shipwrecks out there, I thought, well, yeah, this would uh if I'm gonna do a story about Lake Superior, a horror story about Lake Superior, uh I think it should be a ghost ship. Mm-hmm. And of course, let's go back to 1886, and um, you know a very unique story. And um, you know, there's also wrecks of the um, Edmund Fitzgerald took place in Lake Superior. It's a Gordon Lightfoot song everybody knows, and you know several others. But the 1886, um, you know, shipwreck is like what was so particular about that? Well, that one, uh, it was. What was unique about that is it sank in relatively shallow water. Shallow water, and, really? Yeah, well, 20, 25 feet of water, uh, which in Lake Superior is, is nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it happened in November uh, during you know, basically a winter storm. And when it sank, some of the, the masts, it was a three-mast schooner, still stuck up above the water. And the next day, uh, they found three of the crew members clinging to the mast and frozen in three, three inches of ice. Wow. Dead. Yeah. Um, not, not a way I'd want to go. <laughs> Who does, you know, especially in these times, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's just, um, you know, having about, um, how, how they passed on and everything. And of course, you know, also, you know, just, Basically, a way to save race against time, and um, you know, just an amazing story I got. Yeah, yeah, and that was uh, very inspirational for uh, for the Hawthorne Blow. And the Hawthorne Blow is uh, basically, um, in, in in the real instance, it was the Lucerne, and they they named it the Lucerne Blow. The storm was called the Lucerne Lucerne Blow uh, that sank the ship. So that's that's kind of where the Hawthorne Blow title came from. Okay, and where can we find the Hawthorne Blow at? Uh, that's also available at uh, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Uh, it's available on Kindle, uh, Hudson Books, Sellers, uh, Powell Books, uh, Walmart. Uh, your any independent bookstore can order it. Um, so yeah, it's it's available. It's out there. You can go to Beacon Publishing uh, Group dot com and see links to uh, all the books there to a variety of booksellers as well Mm -hmm. and that's very amazing once again author matthew hellman of the hawthorne blower here on the mike wagner show cursed at beacon publishing matthew a very big thank you for your time being absolutely fantastic just a few more things here we'll have you have back on in 2021 beyond and what can we expect from you this year and the next well uh, i just finished up another full-length novel uh that Another horror novel, kind of a crucible story. In other words, a small town gets isolated and uh, attacked by uh, a, a creature, and mm-hmm. they have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, of course, you know, we're looking forward to that as well, too, and uh, we'd love to have you back on and talk more about it. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career, Matt? 
The biggest influence in my career, mm, I, I would have to say probably Stephen King. Uh, it's probably cliche, but uh, I've read a variety of his stories, and he can go from, you know, just creepy horror, and, and he can scare you with very basic things, you know, big scary spiders, um, to something like The Green Mile uh, or Joyland, which are a little more literary and and intriguing, not not so horror oriented, more a little supernatural and and just really good storytelling. And I, I enjoy that and appreciate really good storytelling. That sounds amazing. And um, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? The best advice is do not give up and be open to any and all uh, critical criticism mm-hmm. and constructive criticism because without it, you can't get better. Right, exactly, and that's very important. Once again, author Matthew Hellman of uh, Hawthorne Blower here on Mike Wagner Show, courtesy of Beacon Publishing. Matt, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely great. Looking forward to having you again soon. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase or check out your books? Uh, I have a website that's MatthewHellmanAuthor.com. Uh, you can also go to BeaconPublishingGroup.com, and uh, I'm on their website, and they'll have links uh, to booksellers for all my books. Uh, a lot of the booksellers are you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, uh, Hudson Books, Powell Books, uh, Walmart. Um, there's, there's, there's a whole variety listed there that you can buy it from, and you can go to your local independent bookseller and, and order it if you'd like. We certainly will do that. Once again, Matt, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. And don't forget to uh, keep in touch as well, too. And i love to hear more of your stories. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me on, Mike. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and Increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout-out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.